Hey guys, I received a really good question from one of my followers on Instagram, and here it is. Uh, Nick, thanks for your tips. I have a question. I have a female player, 12 years old, with a Western grip, a little bit long backswing. Should I try to change her grip so she can hit the ball more flat? She hits with a lot of topspin. Now, this is a really good question, and you know why? Because often uh, people have this negative connotation uh, towards a Western grip, when in fact there's a lot of high level players that use a Western grip. And in today's video, I want to explain to you why the Western grip on the forehand is not as bad as you think it is. So here's the thing with the grips, guys, and a lot of it depends on muscle memory. So let's just say you're a rec player with an Eastern grip, okay? You're an Eastern forehand grip, all right? So you play your forehand for many years with an Eastern forehand grip. All right, so now your wrist is used to a certain angle at the moment of contact. Let's say you go over to semi-Western, now the racket face is closed and you're gonna have a hard time getting the ball deep. You probably still get it over the net. But let's just say you go over to Western, you go over to that fifth bevel, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five. Fifth bevel over, and I'll, same wrist position as the, let me check it again. Here's the Eastern grip, let me go over to the fifth one. Take a look at how the racket is positioned. You have absolutely no chance to get that ball over the net. All your forehand is gonna go into the ground actually before they go over the net. So this is why there's a horrible negative connotation to a Western grip, and all it is is just muscle memory. And a lot of times it's older players who maybe even play with continental grip or Eastern grip, and they know from the feel when they try it themselves that they absolutely can't play with a Western grip. But here's the thing. There's many players at the high level, there's many players in the juniors who have absolutely no problem whatsoever playing with a Western grip. They can handle low balls, they can play on slow surfaces, five fast surfaces, they have advantages on the high ball. And how is that possible? Well, the simple explanation for that is that they use the Western grip from day one and they have the correct muscle memory. So to go back to the question whether this girl should change her grip because her forehand has too much topspin, uh, problems on the forehand are unlikely to stem from the grip, believe it or not. There's probably other technical flaws on the forehand that are making this forehand suboptimal. So when it comes to the grip, the process in which you would change your grip is a very painful process. And this is true even if you had a Western grip and you, let's say, want to switch to a semi-Western or an Eastern or the other way around. They will take you a long time. I tell my students that if they're willing to invest a year of practice, that's how long it's going to take. Maybe players who are more talented can do it in six months. That's how long it's going to take to retrain your wrist, to retrain your arm so that you can get used to the new grip. Whether that's worth it, because again, I'm going to repeat it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a Western grip. There's nothing wrong with an Eastern grip. And of course, the best grip to use is a semi-Western grip. It is most of the time not worth it to put all that effort into changing the grip where the results are going to be questionable. Let's face it. Uh, this girl uh, that we're talking about here might not get that many advantages from switching to a semi-Western grip. Actually, she might uh, find some disadvantages and have a difficult time keeping the ball in play. Now, one thing that's important to understand is that even someone with a Hawaiian grip, when we're talking about muscle memory, has absolutely no, no problem with this type of forehand. When we're talking about injuries, that's another topic. I'm going to get to that. So the Hawaiian grip is actually one past the Western grip. So this is the Western grip, it's the fifth bevel. Hawaiian grip is the sixth bevel. So it's basically a continental grip. It's the same way you hold the racket on your body and you serve. And I just imagine hitting a forehand like this. Now, you're going to be surprised that I actually played some players who had a Hawaiian grip. There's a player called Cici Bellis. There's a player called Alberto Berestategui who were able to play on fast services. They were able to handle low balls. Uh, they were able to play high balls. They actually had no problems on their forehand. In fact, it was the forehand that was their stronger shot. But here's the one exception that I make when it comes to forehand grips. I don't like the Hawaiian grip because it does put a lot of uh, pressure on the wrist. And both of those players, especially Cici Bellis, uh, had wrist injuries. So this is something that's dangerous. So I'm not okay with Hawaiian grip but I'm perfectly fine with a Western grip. And why is that? Well, let's go into the deep technical analysis of what happens actually when we make contact. Take a look at my wrist. You see how comfortable this position of the wrist is? This is why so many juniors switch to this grip naturally. Nobody teaches the Western grip. Coaches are not telling kids, hey, go ahead and grab the racket here. Most coaches are actually against this grip, but yet a lot of junior players find this grip on their own. Why? Because look, when I get a high ball, you see how natural my wrist is. Now I'll take a look at an Eastern grip and, and a high ball. You see how bent my wrist is and how uncomfortable it is? So when kids are young, they're usually small, 
a lot of moon balling going on. They often hit the ball high and naturally they gravitate more towards the Western grip. And now they're going to hit millions of forehands. The muscle memory is going to be so deeply ingrained. And in my opinion, there's absolutely no problem with playing with a Western grip if you've been playing with it from day one. Now, another interesting part of that question was, is there such a thing as too much spin? And yes, there is. It's actually a big problem. And I see it at the recreational level as well. And it's often the case when players are executing spin the wrong way. So when they're just kind of rolling the racket around like this with the wrist or the forearm, or if the racket face is too close, players will get too much spin. So it looks something like this. The players will have a hard time getting the ball very deep. The ball is very spinny, but penetration and depth are lacking. So in order to correct these technical flaws, one must always finish with the entire body and not use the arm in isolation. And also, uh, there's a big myth, and you can check out my video about forehand topspin myths, that you don't create topspin by closing the racket face. Your racket face can be completely neutral. You can still get a heavy topspin forehand. So uh, when there's a player who is kind of active with the wrist in the contact zone and the racket is often kind of closing like this, uh, this will create too much spin and take away from the power and penetration of the ball. Guys, take a look at this thing. Uh, I'm in Florida and we have these things that are so cool. Uh, they're iguanas. See how big that thing is? Kind of cool. But uh, back to the topic of grips. And grips often get a bad rap for the reasons explained in this video. And let's talk about the recreational level. At the junior level, Western grips are very common for the reasons that I explained. But what about the rec level? So what I see from the vast majority of my students who are older men, probably between the age of 30 and 70, I would say the vast majority of those players plays the forehand with either an Eastern forehand grip or a semi-Western forehand grip. And that is perfectly fine to use. I don't have any problems with an Eastern grip or a semi-Western grip. I do have a problem with a forehand struck with a continental grip and a Hawaiian grip. But I also have a problem when players come to me and they blame the grip. They think their forehand is bad because of the grip. And that is often not the case. There are often fundamental flaws in the forehand and the grip is not one of them. Now, does this mean that I never change grips on my players? No, I do change forehand grips from time to time. And even with Anna, after about a year, once she started developing some problems with her arm, I did change her to a semi-Western forehand grip. So it doesn't mean that I never change grips, but I have one factor that's dependent on whether I'm gonna make a suggestion to a player to change the grip or not. And that one factor is muscle memory. So if I have someone that comes to me that's been playing tennis for 20 years and they wanna switch from an Eastern grip uh, to a semi-Western grip, I'm gonna advise them that it's gonna take a long time. There's gonna be a lot of effort required. There's gonna be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of balls required to build a new muscle memory. And it might not be worth the effort because your forehand might not even improve that much. On the other hand, if I have a beginner or somebody that's been playing tennis for a year or two years, now there's not that much muscle memory stored. And now we can talk about, about possibly changing the grip, maybe from an Eastern forehand grip to a semi-Western grip. Or if somebody is for whatever the reason is, I don't really see this that often goes all the way to Western, um, then I would suggest that they use a semi-Western grip. But here are the facts. The semi-Western grip is the best grip to use. There's absolutely no doubt about that. If we compare the semi-Western grip to the Western grip and the Eastern grip, it's the best one because you have the most options. You can flatten the ball out, you can uh, go up on the ball, and you're still quite comfortable when it comes to high balls, but you're a lot more comfortable when it comes to the low balls because with a Western grip on the low balls, you do need to turn your wrist over a little bit more. So out of all the grips, by far the best one is semi-Western, but as I explained in this video, it depends on the most important factor in tennis, and that is muscle memory. So I'm advising you to be very careful on when to switch the grip. Guys, I gotta be really quiet. The iguana, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna shoot it close up. I have to be very quiet. Here guys, take a look. See that thing? How cool is that? Isn't that cool? It looks like a mini dinosaur. Let me try to get a little bit closer. There it goes, gone away. Anyways, uh, greetings from Florida and be careful when switching your forehand grips.